Thank you, Madam President. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, for members, this is a uh, amendment that deals with a civics test. It, is, it would be optional. So this is not something that is a mandate, not required. But we need to realize that civics education has been reduced in Minnesota as more focus has been on other subjects. We understand that. But going from a full credit to a half a credit leaves uh, not much time for our social studies teachers and our civics teachers to be able to get everything in. And so we realize that surveys show that civics knowledge increases in grade school, levels off in eighth grade, and then it declines in senior high, just as they're at a time when they're going to be going out to vote, should be engaged in their government and entering society. So we need to reverse this trend. And there are many others uh, nationally who have made efforts like this as being recognized nationally. But we do understand that for teachers, there's a lot to get in, and my amendment uh, seeks to be helpful to them. And so uh, to describe my amendment, it uh, takes it that um, 50 of the 100 questions that are on the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services test, that there would be selecting 50 of those 100 questions that are currently being posed to applicants for naturalization so that they can demonstrate their knowledge and understanding of the fundamentals of United States history and our government. Now, it's wonderful that they do that, but I think certainly our own students and our own schools, Madam President, should also be able to come prepared uh, with that knowledge. And so the Learning Law and Democracy Foundation, in consultation with the Minnesota civics teachers, would select 50 of those 100 questions under this paragraph to serve as the state's <coughs> civics test questions for the proximate school year. They would transmit those 50 selected test questions to the Department of Education, which would post those 50 questions on its website by August 1st. So I want to have this where we have a process where we are able to serve our teachers, make it easy for them, go through these things, and then make this available for them should they choose to use them in their school district. Now, this is a may administer these civic test questions as part of the social studies curriculum. And this is for charter schools, our public schools, and so it is important to realize that they are. Now, I know all of you many times have seen some of the, uh, the times where we've had on television some of the talk shows about the lack of civic knowledge. I'd really like to end that. I would like to see to it that in the future we would do that. But just they did a survey. A little more than a third of respondents, about 36%, could name all three branches of the U.S. government and one-third couldn't even name one. Just over a quarter, no, it takes two-thirds vote of the House and Senate to override a presidential veto. Maybe these things aren't crucial, but certainly at one time in your life, you ought to know and you ought to have an opportunity to learn and understand. Now, what's a little bit in this civics test? I think it's important for the folks there to understand the kinds of questions and what's being covered, because this isn't just important to our schools, this is for you parents and everybody that is here as well. Matter of fact, these test questions for those who are interested are from the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services at USCIS.gov. Great family activity to go through these questions at the supper table. Quiz your mom and dad. See if they can get them and have a fun time. Questions cover American government, principles of American democracy, system of government, rights and responsibilities, American history, the colonial period, 1800s and recent, and integrated civics such as geography, symbols, and holidays. Questions like, what is the supreme law of the land? Questions like, what do we call the first 10 amendments to the Constitution? Name one branch or part of the government. What is the name of the President of the United States currently? What do we show loyalty to when we say the Pledge of Allegiance? What is one reason colonists came to America? Who lived in America before the Europeans arrived? And you go on to what happened at the Constitutional Convention, when was it written? What was one important thing that Abraham Lincoln did? What did Martin Luther King Jr. do? Name one of the two largest rivers, one state that borders Canada, hint, Minnesota. <laughs> what is the name of the national anthem and 
When do we celebrate Independence Day? North Dakota, South Dakota, and Wisconsin do administer this test. We have national precedent for this. So in summary, it's optional. It is to take the civics test that's given to immigrants. They need not pass it to graduate from high school. And most importantly, once again, it is optional. The level of civic awareness and ultimately civic participation is the ultimate goal and is important for all of us to encourage. I believe this is a simple amendment that will contribute to that civic awareness. Thank you, Madam President. Any more discussion on the amendment? All those in favor of the A44 amendment say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Motion prevails. The amendment is adopted.